this video, I wanted to talk about painting peonies. These are my favorite flowers, and along with roses, I think they make the most striking watercolor paintings. If you're watching my channel, you know I have several tutorials about painting peonies and roses, and I thought the results were good. I was pretty happy with them, but I kept thinking I can do better. And I think finally I figured it out. I think after resolving three very important things that were key to my success, I was able to paint this painting and I wanted to share them with you so you can try them as well. I found this photo a while ago. I thought it looked pretty striking and I thought it would be a good idea to paint it on a large format. I will be painting it on half a sheet of watercolor paper. So this is 15 by 22 inches, but I hesitated to get started on it because I couldn't figure out how I'm going to paint that peach tone that I see in these peonies, which brings me right away to the first key ingredient to successful painting of peonies or flowers in general or anything you want to paint if you want to paint realistically with watercolor some of the lighter colors might be impossible to mix you will have to have these pigments the only pink that i have is upper pink so even if i mixed it with yellow something like that it would be too orange so i knew i had to have that peach color before i could successfully paint from this photo you see on my desk there on the bottom i bought some handmade watercolors and one of the colors that i was able to find the lady who makes them her name is Wai, and uh, she made that peach color that i was not able to find in daniel smith or in any other brands i met Wai on instagram i'll leave you the link to her account in the description under this video so you can check out her colors so if you plan on painting flowers and you only have let's say warm yellow but you don't have lemon yellow or if you see a certain shade of blue in the photo if you don't have let's say upper pink and you want to paint pink flowers you most likely will not be able to successfully replicate the photo without having that color because we don't have white so we need to have matching pigments if you're not going for a realistic effect you're just using the photo as inspiration then it's a different matter it would be a lot harder to paint like that but it's of course possible to just replace let's say that peach with yellow or something like that but that would be a totally different story i started this painting as you see with a very light wash of my two pinks with addition of a little bit of new gamboge warm yellow there on the upper flower where the light hits it i decided to paint the flowers first and then paint the background sometimes i do it the other way around but i think in this case it will give me more freedom to work i can let those light washes of color run i don't have to worry about the edges too much i am trying to leave some of the petals as white paper you see where the light hits those flowers close to the center the petals are basically white and i can also work on shadows a little bit some of the petals will have very light shadow i am using cobalt blue mixed with other colors to paint the shadows i am working wet on wet i don't want any hard edges just yet i'm going to add them at the next stage of my painting you saw me spray the paper pretty thoroughly from my spray bottle i bought a new spray bottle so it will be better my tiny one was very hard to use on such large sheets of paper and i'm also working fairly quickly putting wet color into wet and if color runs over to where i don't want it to be i can always pick it up with clean dry paper towel
I think the difficulty painting of peonies and roses is that there are just so many forms. There are so many petals, there is some things going in the center there. We see all those little stamens in peonies. And the question is how much to paint, how much do we need to capture, and how much to leave to viewers' imagination. And just as a hint, to have realistic painting, but at the same time not to overwork it. I think the biggest problem I had with my previous paintings was that I would overwork them and then I had to pull back and kind of soften everything, maybe lift paint, or I also used pastels to add soft details. So with this one, I'm determined to go very gradually and to paint just enough for these flowers to look like peonies, but to preserve their freshness and not overwork them. There are some dark areas in those flowers. They're not all super light. If you squint and look at them, you will see that the centers are fairly dark on both of them. And there are some darker areas between the petals. They're on the left hand side and on the bottom. So it doesn't mean that everything will be super light, but there will be some more saturated areas. But of course, I'm not going to use black or anything like that. We'll talk about shadows some more in just a minute when I start painting the second layer. For now, I'll tell you my first layer is done. I'll let it dry and my next step will be to work on the background. I'm going to make it very dark using various shades of green, maybe add some purples to it. But from experience, I know the background always looks better and it looks more alive and more natural if I start with a yellow underwash. Not everywhere, but just in some areas. The step will be when I will verify the outlines of the flowers and establish the actual tonal relationships in the painting. because. I do want the flowers to stand out. Right now they're kind of lost on white background, but I think you already can see as I start adding darker areas around them, they start to come forward and the painting kind of starts to come together. I mentioned the outlines of the flowers, the edges. For the most part, there will be hard edges, so they will be well defined. I probably will soften some of them later. In the photo, all the petals are very defined, but I think in the painting, it looks better if some of them kind of blend with the background a little more and some of them have sharper definition. And I think now it's time to mention my second discovery that I had to resolve for successfully painting peonies is the brushes. I bought flat angled brushes. I bought three of them. They're all from Princeton. It's a heritage series and I have an inch and a half and I have two smaller ones. I have three quarters of an inch and half an inch. And let me tell you, it was love at first sight. When I started using those brushes, just everything came together for me. It was so much easier to paint larger areas with that inch and a half brush. You would think it's huge, but it holds just the right amount of pigment and not too much water. So the painting process was a lot faster. I was able to paint without certain areas drying and getting patchy. I didn't have to re-wet paper. The color I applied had just the right saturation. And also the brush stroke with that brush is very versatile. You can paint with the white surface. You can paint with the edge. You have a pointy end. It's very soft, but springy at the same time. So it was definitely a great investment. I bought it after I did some research on painting flowers and I saw that some artists that I admire, they all use those angled brushes. I only had flat brushes with a straight edge, which work well, but they're not as versatile. I don't know how to explain it, but they're more resistant to movement. So those angled brushes are just much easier to paint with and they're great for painting those shadows that we see between all the petals. It's just easier with, to follow the shape of the shadow with them. So the, the shadows basically paint themselves with those brushes. I forgot which artist said it. Give me a stick and I'll paint your masterpiece. Tools don't really matter. I think that's probably true for like oils or mixed media maybe. But if you want to paint pure watercolor, we are very dependent on our tools and materials. We need good quality paper. If I paint something large like that, I only use 100% cotton. 300 pound paper, which is getting more and more expensive, but you cannot replicate that look 
that you get on any other paper definitely not on wood chip paper we need good quality pigment so we get beautiful saturated colors no fillers no dull washed out pigments and we need proper brushes they don't have to be natural fibers they don't have to be super expensive the ones i bought were not expensive at all but they have to be good quality not shed and be the right shape for the subject matter And let me draw attention to the shadows on the flowers. I think at this point it will be easier to see that when I painted those centers, I created, first of all, hard edges. It's especially noticeable on the top flower, but in general, all the shadows that I painted on the flowers I painted with color. So I did not introduce a neutral tint. I did not use black mixed with my colors. I painted shadows on the flowers with the same color as the petals, just with more saturation. Because the shadows, if you look at them, they're not black, they're not gray. That flower kind of glows from within. If anything, those shadows are yellow because of sunlight, because of the color of the flower itself. They do not cast black shadows between the petals. So that was another key point that I wanted to highlight in this video is to make the shadows colorful. Use the object color in more saturation to paint the shadows and if you see that some of them are cooler like the shadow on the bottom flower on the very bottom petal the shadow is obviously cool but all I had to do is add just a tiny bit of cobalt blue to my upper pink to paint that shadow. So with colorful shadows, I was able to achieve that glow that we see in the photo. All right, as my background appears, I was able to adjust the shadows on the flowers. You see that I deepened everything and I applied a second layer of watercolor on the background. One layer usually is never dark enough. And also when we overlap several colors, you see I'm just dropping different colors onto the background we get that complexity of color that's what creates the depth of space that's why i usually don't paint just black background first of all black pigments are sometimes too warm they don't recede into the distance and also when there is no complexity when it's just one flat color it's hard to convey the depth of space because the space is, that we see is not flat right it's all varied there are different colors there so that's what we need to capture on paper as well Last step as usual would be slight correction on the edges, no matter how hard I try to preserve some white of the paper, just tiny corrections with my small dagger brush are necessary. At this stage, I'm trying not to overdo it. I'm using Dr. Paige Martin's pen white ink. That's my preferred material lately for those um, highlights. So just a few brush strokes with that opaque ink to bring back the whites. See some tips of the petals are very have very distinct white color. I think that gives the flowers even more realism, even more definition. And with white ink, I'm able to give those flowers some more texture. Some of the petals are kind of wrinkled, and then what you call it, they like a little bit pleated. So that's very hard to paint with watercolor even though i tried with my angled brush i did a little bit of dry brushing but i'm going to accentuate it even more with the dagger brush all right i think my painting is done here is the final result in better light let me know in comments if you like the painting what your thoughts are about pigments and brushes in painting flowers thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one here on tamarap studios channel Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!